Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and I've finally done it! Yes, I've finally managed to um, complete the uh, spaceship victory in Space Exploration 0.5 and so that means um, I've decided to stop at this point because then I can then I can sort of kick off again with um, Space Exploration 0.6 in a couple of weeks, so a week on Monday in fact, um, with, with some friends and with Crastorio 2 pack as well. So I've decided to do this for a, a few reasons. The first one is that basically I feel like I've I, I want to play 0.6 because there's been some fairly significant changes made so I think I'm ready to move on to what 0.6 but I wanted to fin get to a point with this game first where I could just sort of draw a nice line and say yes I finished it I've done the spaceship victory so I'm not going to do the archaeological victory yet but I am going to go on and do that with um, uh, with, with 0.6 so let's have a bit of a look through how, how, how all this happened the first thing I needed to do was build a victory ship so here this is this is my victory ship here it's um, kind of big and the design was constrained quite a lot by by basically what it required so in order to win the victory with the victory ship you need to have you need to travel at 250 speed and whilst also running one of these things a nexus in um in in victory mode which i forget the name of what is it called um it distortion drive mode there we go, that one. Um, and as you can see there on the screen, it uses six gigawatts when you're at the, at the uh, relevant speed. So that means I need to have a power system in the ship capable of providing six gigawatts to this, and then a bit more to the rest of the ship to keep all the shields up, the lasers firing, the engines running, all that sort of thing. And there were quite a lot of challenges with this. So the uh, the first challenge was simply going that fast. And so I worked, I discovered through a bit of a granted through sort of trial and error and a bit of experimentation that with this many engines which I think is 31 yes 31 engines you can you can make a ship of this big travel at a speed of 250 so that meant I, I needed to have more basically in a long line like this um, in order to get the maximum efficiency out of them it did occur to me that I could perhaps have a, a second set of wings coming off the top of it with the engines on the bottom of that but then if you've got well, if you've got engines blasting against the front wall of the ship then you lose a fair amount of efficiency of them so so the engines would run at maybe 60% efficiency, so you'd need even more engines and therefore an even bigger ship and more fuel and so on. So I thought, right, the first design constraint is I need this many engines in a long arc like this. The second design constraint is that I need to be able to produce 7 gigawatts of power, or at least 6 and a bit gigawatts of power. Um, so that means I basically needed this block of power generation up here, where we've got the 6 antimatter reactors in the middle generating the actual heat, then all of these... Uh, heat exchangers around the outside turning that into really really hot steam then these turbine generators turning it into cold cooler steam and a lot of electricity and then these ones turning that steam back into water and then on top of that you then need to, de to deal with all of the water that comes out of this system so you need to you need to keep the water circulating so uh, so the third yeah with those two constraints needing this big block of a um, of a power generation system plus this big arc of engines but only being only having 4,000 um, spaceship uh, stress to play with. Basically, that meant the ship had to be this wide. It had to be a block, have a block this side, and then everything else just had to be sort of pulled in as much around it as possible, like sort of sucking air out of a, a plastic bag or something around, <laughs> around some whatever it is you're trying to store it in. And that's why I've ended up with this sort of shape, which is sort of a, a kind of oh, and you also need to have the front needs to be pointy, and you need to have sloped, sloped. Any front edges need to be a bit sloped like this. So again, that's why. So you, you end up with this sort of shape in foot shape and force to an extent. I then went round to putting in shields because you need shields to protect the ship from all of the rocks out in space and lots of lasers for the same for the same reason. So this this design sort of function form followed function, should we say? So it's not one of my prettiest designs, but it is still nonetheless it is quite a nice it's a nice chunky ship that I feel that uh, did the job. And also this this design constraint with the uh, with the um, integrity, as you can see, I'm right up against the 4,000 with 3979 out of 4,000 here. Um, that's why I've got these big holes cut in it as well, because those reduce, those take away from the amount of uh, amount of stress you're using. So the way it calculates it is you get a certain amount of um, each each block that your ship consists of. Uh, each I think it's each piece of floor is one one stress, and then each piece of floor that has something on it is two stress, uh, unless it's a wall, in which case it's one and a half, I think. But you get a certain amount of floor space free, so there's no point in going around trying to cut out little chunks in the middle of here and so on. Um, and so, so the, it's trying to find a balance where you're removing decent, decent chunks of, of empty space like this, but you don't want to have a really narrow bit because then the walls around it would outweigh the, um, the gain from having the hole in the middle. So there's no point in cutting out a space here, for example. 
so anyway, I, with lots and lots of fiddling, I eventually came across this, came up with this ship design, and I then had to do spend quite a lot of time just sort of tinkering with it, just, just, just making little improvements here and there. So putting in more lasers. I've got little clusters of lasers down here, for example, because I kept getting taking a lot of damage on the on the on the wing areas around here. Um, I put in the shields down here with 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 a slightly different angle from where I had them before. Little little going in, making all kinds of little tweaks, putting in more lasers where they were needed, putting in and then putting in all of these pumps to get rid of the water and try and get it round here and back into the tanks or round the bottom here and back into the into the heat exchangers as quickly as I possibly could. So there was a lot of a lot of fiddling with the design because the design is only just good enough to get the spaceship victory, but it did, and that's the important thing. So. In order to get this, the, the first thing I had to do was do the um, do do one of the factory spaceship researches down down here, probably the, this one here, factory Re factory spaceship four, um, which took four thousand. No, it can't have been that one because it's more difficult than that. Um, oh, it's factory spaceship six, so it doesn't it doesn't show the extra infinite ones in between. So I did factory spaceship six, which, as you can see from factory spaceship seven, um, if we extrapolate from this it required four of the it requires deep space science for it basically requires four tier four of all of the science packs except for the uh, biological one and it required 16,000 of each of those that's a huge number so I spent a bit of time going around essentially improving um, and scrape straightening out all the kinks in my uh, in my research production so a big one of those, and I think I touched on this in the last video, was getting rid of all of the um, junk data cards that come through here. So it's, it, it's not too bad now because I have mostly fixed it. But you can see there's quite a lot of cards flowing in here. They all come down here. So in order to get a bit more space down here, I put in a where an extra warehouse to give it a bit more storage capacity. Again, this was just while the problem was being solved, but just to get things things running so there's a bit more buffer space. So warehouse here, which dumps out onto this belt, goes into, into the uh, chest down here, so that picks up. Then over at the other end, where these go in. So the, the problem was that down here, this station was filling up and this was backing up because these the good memory cards are backing up because there wasn't enough storage space up here. So which is why I now have two warehouses of storage space with 25 more than more than 30,000. We've got 46,000 memory cards stored up here. And the reason this has happened, so I don't know if you remember in the past, but I've had problems before with trying to get enough memory cards in, enough good memory cards blank memory cards for the system to work and so all of the memory cards got turned into science catalogs and so on and all the other parts they get turned into and then I put a massive drain on the science and that caused a lot of those memory cards if we go back over to the um, to the science area you'll see that as, as we process this uh, the where we go? here we go the the um, the insight the the, the, the the catalogs get turned into insights which dumps out the well the insights out to here and then we dump out and then the insights get turned into significant data and that dumps out quite a lot of these memory cards that then need to get go back into circulation somewhere and making the science packs when as you make as you make science packs you also produce quite a lot of the junk data cards they all need to go somewhere so they all flow away down here and so we're getting through massive massive quantities of the catalogs and all and that was spitting out again large very large quantities of the junk data cards and the good data cards and so the balance of where all of the buffering was happening shifted wildly enough that I then had to worry about putting things in different places. Um, I had that massive flood of good data cards back at the back at the central location where it's formatting them. So I needed to do something with all of those, and that's why I put in the extra warehouses. Now, gradually, I reckon over time we'll get back to the po point where we're in a bit more sort of bit more of an equilibrium position, so we don't have that massive store of them there, and they can be a bit more spread out into these into these catalogs. But then, as you can see, we've got through. There's a shortage of catalogs here. We've got the um, these are the tier threes. There aren't very many of those, so we're expect we're asking for some more, but they haven't been made yet. So those are a lot of data cards that just haven't been converted into the into the catalogs that will be sitting here and in these chests. So it's a, it's a lot of data cards that I had to handle. But that was reasonably straightforward. Once I worked out what was happening, that was okay. Now, there were a lot of other places where I made little tweaks to try and help with this, this system. So, for example, I, I broke out the uh, the junk data cards. They used to be on the same belt as the uh, as the good as the blank data cards. Now I've got them broken out onto their own separate belt so they, uh, that flows down here and sort of winds its, spaghettis its way through down to here. I've also gone through and I've put in proper splitters for joining the belts together because sometimes you get you get a thing like here where it was only it was this this belt was just butting up straight against the side of this one so you were only unloading the first the top side of the belt at first then the bottom side of the belt and only onto the right hand side of this belt so 
you had all of these problems where these sort of things just wouldn't merge in nicely. Whereas putting in a, a splitter like this means you can use both sides of the belt and things will merge much more evenly. So we'll, we, we can actually get these out even when there's a lot of data junk data cards coming from up here. As I say, it doesn't matter so much anymore because we've got the problem basically sorted out. We've got storage space for all of these data cards. But but back then it helped think, it helped in, that, in, in the moment to try and sort, sort things out a bit. On a similar note, I discovered I had far too much scrap being made, so that must have been over here in this, in this area, um, to the point where these, the scrap stations were filling up. Are, are they still doing it? I don't know. I don't remember whether I actually fixed this one or whether I just noticed it and went, oh dear. Yeah, so here we go. We've got too much scrap being produced, um, and that is because the trains over here aren't unloading quickly enough because, well, at one point previously, it's not so much of an issue now, but previously there was too much... Um, contaminated scrap coming out for these machines and, and this belt was backing up and as you can see it's starting to happen again now because we're unloading a load of um, normal scrap here uh, not a huge amount of it fortunately but as this comes out it's causing a bit of a blockage in here so I, I there are a couple of things I need to do I, need, I want to come in here and sort of put some um, belt balance the belt sides here so it's coming out on both sides I want to put in some more of these machines as well um, and just to get the the whole scrap reprocessing running a bit more quickly and efficiently but again we've got huge amounts of the um, contaminated scrap here that's trying to be unloaded into these chests but it can't be because the chests are full so there are lots of these little things that I was going through and sort of sorting out um, this obviously is not one I've sorted out but it's um <laughs> yeah this sort of thing was what I was going through and, and, and fixing up there were also quite a lot of bottlenecks being caused in the science production so a lot some of those were being caused by low power so I built up some extra power down here some were being caused by insufficient thermofluid so again I've given that a boost and it's a case of just going through all of the a lot of these and, and looking to see where the problems are so for example here we can see this one is not really working actually there's these data cards that are coming up here are being produced a bit too slowly why are you why are you too slow are you missing something yes you're missing you're missing those data cards the London Eye data cards are coming in there so we can again we follow that back follow that back all the way down to here where we see they're coming up here and down here they're just and it's a simple case of they're not being made fast enough by these machines so perhaps i could come out and put in some speed modules or make or cover them by the put, put more speed modules into this beacon or that's that sort of thing so there's there's ways that these can be fixed but the problem the basic the, the root of the problem here is that i was making these at the right speed to be producing these catalogs the tier two catalogs and then when i tapped them off here to go off to make the tier three or tier four catalogs whichever one it is um i didn't think about going in and making more more infrastructure for that now at this point because i've finished it's not actually a problem but if i was carrying on with this then i'd be going through and patching up all of these things making sure all of these all of these systems were running fast enough to keep just to keep everything going at the speed i wanted to be I wanted to be running at on a very similar note of the sort of the going through and just improving things i had a massive shortage of the um, significant data that's these yellow or these golden yellow cards that are coming out here now at the moment we're basically okay for all of this all of the scientists we've got them coming down here to do the blue the blue science packs in here to do the uh, the pink ones that's fine there's enough of those you can see the belt is completely backed up and for the orange and then up here for green yep green and and deep space at the top the black ones the problem was the problem basically came from I was I've been loading massive quantities of them into this station here um, let's see did, did I remember to yes I have I have set these up properly so this will eventually fill up once this is but at the moment it's it's not it's not even half full yet and that's because there's a science some of the deep space science data down here pulls in these the significant data and again I I I dropped that in I said yeah sure we'll pull in significant data we're making that over there we'll pull it off here that'll, I'm sure that'll be fine Turns out it wasn't. It's not fine once you start putting everything into. Once you have everything running at full full speed ahead, full and just pulling massive quantities of everything through. So I came in here. I did some upgrades. Um, I put these up onto the the four tier four recipe, uh, which is where they, they now produce. They take in all four of the uh, insights and produce a larger number of um, significant data cards for that per insight. So it's 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 a little bit more efficient there. Um, and I also doubled the number of the machines doing it. So we now I, I copied this, pasted it up here, and routed this belt round. So that's fine. It it worked. Um, so I'm now I'm now producing them at twice the rate I was, and that's why it's not an absolute. That's why it's not completely died because I've doubled the speed. Now I could increase this further by coming in and putting in better computers. But at this point, I discovered I was starting to run into issues with the rate I was producing the insights at. So. I came over here for all of these areas. I upgraded the computers as a tier three supercomputer. There, as you can tell by the three stripes on it, and the rest are all tier twos. Um, and I upgraded this by um, by going up to the tier four recipe. So it now takes in all four of the uh, catalogs and spits out 
more significant and more insights than it would have done otherwise. The problem with that is it needs to take in some of these data cards to do so because making these requires more data cards than doing it the tier 3 way. And that's why I hadn't bothered doing that before. Um, because I didn't want to have to find a way to route the data cards in. But at this point, we're producing so many data cards here when we make the significant data that that's actually enough to keep the entire area, so, to keep all, all four of the areas that are making these insights supplied. So so that is actually working. It, it seems to be fine. I don't need to bring extra memory cards in from elsewhere. I, I did put in a train bringing in some memory cards here, or at least I added it to the station because there's a convenient space and I had too many memory cards anyway. But I haven't actually needed to use any of those, as you can see by this being a dead end here. Um, so yeah, the system is is working re quite nicely. We're producing we are producing the uh, this the insights fast enough. I could come in here and upgrade some more of these computers if I needed more, but at the moment it it, it it's keeping up. So that so this is okay. So that was running quite well. I eventually doing all of this. I eventually managed to get my spaceship uh, size research up to, uh, to up to four thousand. So I was able to build that big spaceship, and I went out, flew out in it. Went out, started trying to um, trying to take on, trying to do the uh, do, do the victory conditions. But as I alluded to earlier, it was the ship wasn't quite good enough at first. I kept getting um, there were there were basically I, I ran into two different slightly different types of problems. I'd say the first one was that occasionally rocks would sort of sneak past the shields or would knock through the shields. If you get two big rocks coming in in quick succession, one would take down the shield, and then the second one would would hit smack into the side, punch a hole in the ship, and the ship would slow down. And the rule is with this thing, to get this to, to, to the win condition, you need to run for 600 seconds, so 10 minutes, without dipping below 250 speed. And if you dip below that speed, then you have to start all, you have to start the 10 minutes all over again. So when a rock punches through and you get a small hole, you can go over and you can repair it, but then you have to start again from the beginning of the 10 minutes. And I spent quite a long time on Wednesday's stream just trying repeatedly and making little tweaks to the ship and sort of moving the lasers around a little, little tweaks but it was never enough I couldn't I just couldn't do it so somebody pointed out in chat that I should do another energy weapon damage research in order to get the lasers to be a little bit more powerful so that they'd then be able to hopefully take out the rocks without slightly more easily so yeah I started doing that energy damage weapon energy weapon Energy weapons damage 12, 12, 11, which is the one I did, required 3,200 of the tier 1 deep space science packs. So I thought, that's fine. I'm making the tier 4s. How hard can it be? Well, quite hard, it turns out, because I had a massive Naquium shortage. And I know, I know there's been Naquium shortages a lot, quite a lot during this playthrough, and it's just, just how things tend to be. But this was a slightly more unusual one. If I have a look over on Tulip, the problem was that the iron mine that's just down here had run out completely, so there was no iron left in here at all. So um, there was a little bit left in the station, as there usually is. You end up with a little dribble of iron ore left over in your stations when, after the, but not enough for it to summon an entire train. So, so I sent a train over here manually, picked up some of the iron ore, took it up here, and the iron ore is required. It goes in here, it goes up here. It's turned into iron plates, as you probably expect. It goes up here, into here, where it's turned into sulfuric acid. It's one of the ingredients of sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is required in order to make the vitalic acid. It's required in enormous quantities to go in and make the, the naquium, as it's in, in this stage here where you're turning the naquium, washed naquium into naquium dust. That requires requires only requires acid and, and a lot of it. So we chuck so we that was that was the problem, and that caused the whole thing to grind to a halt. So as I say, I sorted it temporarily by sending a train in here to grab a little bit of the iron ore and then bring it up here. And then I sorted it a bit more thoroughly and permanently by putting in this landing pad here that requests um, ooh, requests uh, rocket requests rockets full of iron. Let's put in the um, ooh, let's put in this belt here like that so we can actually so it'll actually carry on working. It requests rocket loads of iron, which will come in here, dropped off, and then that can flood up this belt all the way up here and just go into the system like this so it's merged into this belt here so we're we're not really using the iron from tulip anymore i mean we are a tiny bit but but not but not in very large quantities most of it is being is coming up and is being brought in from from the massive refining facilities on norvis uh, that belt i just put in there is the one that gets rid of all the rocket components the, the rocket components themselves and the um uh pods and then passes them all the way down here to here where they'll get turned into um into stacked rocket sections and put back into the uh into the spaceship uh, to be taken off somewhere else and disposed of generally I don't really care where just get rid of them I don't need them on this planet so yes that sorted out the uh, Naquian problem I don't I don't know if we're still playing catch up if we have a look in space yeah we can see there's one of one of the ships is is, is queued up in space here there's one on the ship there's one there that's nearly back okay and then there's one that's presumably 
either on Norvis or near but nearby and is just on it may be unloading. So how much how are we doing down here? We've got down to <laughs> about just over two about just over two and a half thousand crushed naquium left in na crushed naquitite, sorry, left in there, and one point two thousand naquium that we've picked up from the processing. So once these empty, the ship will take off, the next one will come in, and we just keep the process flowing and and we'll see how that goes. Um, whether it, whether it actually sort of gets caught up again or not, I mean, it doesn't. Re I think we're probably okay because if we look at, let's have a look over here, see if we are actually okay. Um, no, we're not okay. There's only 200 in here, so we need we need the more ships to come in, coming be coming through here. We haven't refilled the buffers of of, of, of Naqu that required for Naquim yet, because we're using enormous quantities of it. So here we see you can see the uh, the tier two, three, and four are mostly starting to back up again a little bit, but the ones are still coming through. The fours are backed up to how far? How far did they go? There's a lot of these actually. A lot of tier four sciences. Okay, the fours are backed up to here, so I could start doing some tier four science again. But that means it's still making fours, and that means it's still and, and so to make fours requires threes. So we're still making threes as well. Make threes requires twos. And to make twos requires ones. So, so I was going to say half of them are actually go, going to still be going down this belt here. But actually, that's not true because we've we've run into another problem with the fours where we've run out of the process, Naquin processors. So again, you see that's another thing where I'd have to have to go look back up through the through the um, through through the process and find out where the problem was. But I'm not going to bother because we've basically finished at this point. I strongly and also I strongly suspect it's a shortage of Arcospheres or or maybe it's a shortage of Naquin actually. No, it's more likely a shortage of Naquin. We're not making the Naquin cubes and tesseracts and so we can't make the processors. That's probably the issue. But as I say, I don't really care about any of these problems now. I'm showing you. Mo I'm showing you mostly because I think it's a little bit interesting to show that whilst I have managed to scrape a victory, there's a lot of problems in the logistics. And you can tell because all of these all these messages keep popping up from LTN telling me that yeah, you're short of stuff. There are problems on the network. You've run out of this. You've run out of that. You've run out of the other. And so if I wanted to continue, and it is sort of I, my normal criteria for finishing one of these games is to go through and do all of the non-infinite research. So I could do teleportation. Let's stop that one because that requires tier one. So let's start this one. Do let's see if I can get this one done. Teleportation and dimensional anchors. They sound interesting. Um, let's do them the other way around. Um, I suspect that's going to be a thing that's required for the archaeological research. So, so yeah, normally I like to say I will do all. I will do everything that's a non-infinite or non-semi-infinite research. And so I'd go through and pick out those ones and get and get and get them done and, and, and sorted. But to an extent, I, I I'm just looking forward to, to getting finished at this point. So I think I'm probably not going to go through and do all of those. But I will point point to them and say, look, there's a few, there's a, there's a few left. But I've done most of let's say most of the non-infinite stuff. So here is yeah, here is my space station. It's um it's basically it's basically kind of working, but it's a little bit ropey and some of the, some of the things aren't being supplied in quite large enough quantities. It would be quite a significant job to go through and sort all of that out though, and I don't really want to. I want to get onto 0.6 and start playing with that one. And and I'll have some friends with me on that one, so maybe between us we'll have a little bit more um, a little bit more in, um, thoroughness between us, should we say, and we'll actually oh, build things up properly and, 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 and make sure all the supplies keep flowing and, and so on and so on, rather than just sort of half-arsing things together a little bit. So, this has been Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Thank you for joining me for the year for the series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will be doing a summary video to sort of just to talk about the entire base and everything that's going to be going on, how I how I got to this very final point, which will summarise the entire game. And I don't know how long I'm going to be talking for to do that one. Um, so yeah, come along for that one if you if, just, just for sort of a final summary and a goodbye to the whole um, whole factory, and then come back and join me uh, in um, early August for the um, streams of Space Exploration 0.6 um, with Crastorio 2 as well. And I hope you'll also continue to come along and join me on Wednesdays, where I shall now be starting to play Dyson Sphere program, which is good, which is very very Factorio-y type game. So I'm hoping it'll appeal to me and it'll appeal to you, and you'll stick around. So as ever, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next uh, next series.